We're doing, it. We're doing an invention. It's priority. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Live life as though everything is though everything is rigged in your favor. Ignore the noise. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in yourself. Recognize that you are an entrepreneur. From the campus of the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith School of Business, the Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship presents Bootstrap. <laughs> Welcome to Bootstrapped, a Dingman Center podcast. I'm Ilana Fine. And I'm Joe Bailey. And each episode of Bootstrap features a funder or founder from the University of Maryland uh, community. And today we are excited to have Santana Moss, whose name is probably familiar to most of you. Um, and if not, um, just uh, Google them real quickly and you'll be uh, wondering why not. <laughs> so um, we are really excited to have Santana with us today because as our listeners know, we have over the course of the show tried to feature you know, entrepreneurs from all different backgrounds, not just technology entrepreneurs. And so uh, we're excited to have Santana here and I'll turn it over to you in a second to talk about kind of life after the NFL and what led you to you know, kind of what you've been up to. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how you ended up being an, a kind of post NFL uh, entrepreneur. So I'll you know turn it over to you maybe just to say like can you talk a little bit about uh, the decision to to retire and at that point what you thought was going to be uh, ahead for you? Well, you know what one of the things that we learned early in our careers or um, premature career of being an NFL player is that this league is not for long. The NFL stands for not for long. That's what they tell you. <laughs> So you come into there as a kid, and like I can say, kid, I was 21, and they tell you, hey, you're lucky to make four years. Um, I come in there my first year and, and hurt my knee, and I'm put on the shelf immediately. Mm -hmm. And I just went through four years of my best playing in college, and at an all-time high, and the only injury that ever set me down was, it didn't even set me down, I had a broken jaw, and I played with it. And I'm sitting here now, the one tool that got me here is my knee. And I'm on a shelf, and now so many thoughts going through my head about, you know what, if this is going to be, you know, how this career, you know, has me or or this is what's going to be dealt to me, I need to start thinking fast about something that, you know, what to do with this money that i am got. You know, it's one of those things that you get. Like my uncle was one of those guys, he told me a lot. He said, hey, you know, when you when you get hold of all this money, we didn't come from money. So we didn't have no tools on saying, hey, you put it here, you put it there. One of the things we thought about doing is investing fast. And the first thing that I was taught was real estate. So um, I did it the, the wrong way. I, I probably failed at it. But, but So let me ask, because, you know, you're here, you're in the NFL, you know, you have these resources that you, but you, you've got to have a whole set of people, yeah. agents and teammates and a bunch of people who are kind of there. I mean, is that a trusted network of people to help you think about a real estate pivot? No. You learn fast that you can't trust everybody in a suit. Mm. You know, you can't trust everybody. They, they tell you what first. What about a bow tie? Can you trust <laughs> everyone in a bow tie? <laughs> you know what? I might give him I might give him more of a nod than a person with a long tie. Right, yeah. But uh, no, nah, they tell you fast to watch everybody that comes after you with this newfound money you have. You know, and you, you see them. They come out of the, all walks. They come and tell you, I got this deal for you. I got this plan. I got mm. They tell you they sell you so many dreams that you believe half of them. And are you saying no to all of these opportunities? Yes to some. You're saying no, to no some? but being a guy like me, I've always wanted money yeah. and I've always wanted to to sustain the money that I have. So you're thinking about them and like, well, if this is gonna allow me to see this money grow and, and have it for the long term, maybe I should, you know, you know, partake in that. Or maybe I should, you know, have some consideration of, of what are you talking about. So I was one of those guys that um, you know, if you came to me and you were somebody that I trusted then maybe I might, you know, listen to you. And uh, my dad was always one of those persons that told me, look, you know, put it in a CD, you do this, you do that. It didn't come from it. So we didn't know much. He just knew what he knew. When and these people are coming to you with opportunities, are they asking you to invest your money in this opportunity or just lend your name to it? How does that work? You got to understand something. When you have the money, they're really coming to you because you have the liquid. They want you to it. use your liquid to make whatever – Suggesting Their dreams or happen. exactly so instead of them teaching us the way I've learned now over some of the L's I took and these L's wasn't lost as they was definitely learning you know points in my life um I use them all as stepping stones I say hey I learned you know it's a L but I learned from it yeah. um they basically didn't teach you or tell you that hey you can use that as collateral for you to get the 
you know, to get the, uh, you know, don't have to use yours. You know, just it, it can be something you put up and say, well, you know what, let me get this money from you and use that. And, and guess what? If it doesn't work, then I have this to be able to pay you back on. That's right. That's you know, right. we wasn't taught that. You was told to use yours. So I went out there and I did that. I went through the real estate ro- uh, route and, and I bought property. I bought probably too much, too many, you know, properties that I shouldn't bought at, at that time. Instead of crawling before I walked. I went out there running, you know, and that's all I knew at the time. And when you're buying properties, how are you curating it? Are you focusing on a geographic area? You have somebody helping you out? What I did at one and one WAP, I had a realtor, and he knew more about selling and getting sales more than telling me what was the right way to, you know, buy. He was thinking about his pocket instead of thinking about mine. And I didn't get out there and just bought, buy one at a time. I bought one big old community of, um, you know, uh, triplexes and duplexes. And I'm saying to myself, the guy who I'm buying from, he told me how much he was generating. And I'm saying to myself, wow, I, I would love to generate that kind of money on my money. Right. You know, who won? Who wouldn't? And what I didn't know is the upkeep comes in place and to have to go get that money from those those tenants. All that stuff plays a role. But like I said before, I did it for a few years. You, I, I lost on it. I learned from it, you brother. And I was able to move out of it or move on you know, learning something from it and then downsizing it and buying a few and being able to sustain those and really see those grow and be value to me. So, you know, going the route I went, I wouldn't advise anybody to go that route, but it was a good learning tool. It was a good way to go out there and say, you know, I stepped out there on the limb not knowing and end up, you know, learning from it. And now I'm able to go out here and do it again without having to take those same L's. So I know real estate is one of the many things that you're involved in now. You know, when you uh, when you look back on you know what's happened since since retiring, like how did everything? How did your you know, portfolio come you know come to pass? Like what did what you do in that you know first year, first day, first year? <laughs> maybe well, you took up maybe like you recuperated a little bit, but how yeah. did you go about th- down that path? One of the things I can tell you is that to this day, you know, I've been retired now for four years and I'm still trying to find ways to make sure that I'm doing the right thing with my investments. Um, I don't shy away from many of them, especially when they make sense. Um, I'm more cognizant, um, you know, when it comes to knowing of them because I've been out there and I've done so many that didn't do well, even through the ones through who was supposed to be my advisors, I allowed them to do investments for me and they didn't do well. So having to be yeah. built that blow so many times, you able to learn yourself like, man, you know what? Everything that sound good isn't good. So let me, you know, um, you know, take my time with anything that's, you know, being presented to me. And even if it's being presented to me, half of the time I don't want to do it. Let me go out there and do something that I want to do that I feel like that can generate something that I feel that is doing good. Or if I have someone of a friend or someone who I know that is you know, out there doing some of the things that I want to do. Hey, I, I, you know, I follow that cab. I call it follow that cab. I jump in the same cab and go the same route. And to me, that's been working for me more than just l- allowing somebody to give me advice and say, well, you, well you do this or put up money here and there. And the one of the things I want to do the most right now that I'm retired and knowing that the money goes faster than it comes in <laughs> is try to find some of those annuities and some of those things that you can go out there and say, hey, Long-term investment, you know, let me go out here and put this money up for long-term and, and let it build on its own instead of putting it in the bank and you're getting 1% or 2%. I mean, so first of all, it sounds like you've become quite the seasoned investor now, looking at your portfolio, trusting your own gut instincts. Kind of what are some of the opportunities that you see right now? Well, some of the things around me, um, you know, um, I've talked to many guys. I've, I rub elbows and, you know, bump shoulders with so many people that's in the world and different head funders come come my way. You know, I have a guy that's with Merrill Lynch. And it's crazy because when I first got into the game, I didn't know the different types of financial advisor. I didn't know the private ones from the public ones. I didn't, I didn't know it. I didn't know money that way. You know, I, my first real job was the NFL. You know, I remember painting for somebody and he gave me $800. And he's like, you know, I think it was a booster. He just made sure I was paid. And I probably should have got $75 for it. And I got $800. <laughs> you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, that, was, that wasn't that was a job. You know? Yeah. you know, but he had to find a way to pay me. You can't yeah. just right. pay me. You right. know what I mean? I'm just being real with you. Yeah. So the NFL was my first real job. So to not no money, you know, all I knew is to just, hey, when I got it, you know, it was like hotcakes. You, you want to do something with it. And. So going through the things I went through, now I sit there and I ask guys, you know, people who I'm familiar with who has wealth, you know, what are some of the things you doing, 
you know, with, with your money that's allowing you to accumulate what you accumulate and su- sustain some of the things you have outside of your business. And one of the guys said, hey, this is my financial advisor. He might be a bad card player, but he knows money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he might not know how to, you know, you know, you know, gamble his money, but he knows how to hold on to it. And the guy just, he's been teaching me a lot of stuff from these different hedge funds, different funds, just funds that, um, you know, wealthy men are in from, from you name it, uh, Bill Gates and all these guys are putting money up in these things. And you never know nothing about it because it's not talked about because some of these banks, you know, have private guys like himself that's putting some of their clients into it. And the private financial advisors, you know, they don't have no one to see to. It's just them. So we wasn't told that, yeah, we was told to get a private, I mean, get a financial advisor. We weren't told which one. So you go with that private guy thinking that he's going to protect me. He cares nothing about your money. He cares only about his pocket. So he would do any and everything he could do to make a dollar, whether he wins or lose. That public guy, that guy who's with the Merrill Lynch's, with the Wycovias, with all those 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 name brand banks, they can't lose. They lose, the bank lose. Yeah, I right. sue the bank. I don't right. sue them. Yeah. So, you know, I learned my lesson from dealing with them. So that's some of the things that I had to, you know, step out there on the limb and be dealt with to, in order for me to understand now. And I think the best teacher in life is experience. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the only way I've learned. And I've heard guys tell me, one of the things I can tell you is that I can't sit up here and tell you that everything was peaches and cream for me. I can't sit here and tell you to the, to, to you all face, I'll be lying to you to tell you that, man, all the money that I, I got, I was able to hold on to it and I see it growing now. No, I had to fail. The I thing is, lose. you're failing, but you're still putting yourself out there. So you're taking these these experiences, and we see this a lot in our podcast with other guests, is you learn from this and you still go out and you make it happen. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that I... I may be, I'm able to walk high with because uh, for every time I've lost, you know, I gained something, you know, and now I'm I'm coming back harder. And to even be sitting here and say you took a loss and you're still able to be able to do it, that's yeah. that's something you, you can feel good about. Yeah, Alana, this sounds like an NFL player who maybe had an injury or two in his <laughs> yeah, career right, and still exactly was able to come knows, back from yeah, it. How many two. years in the NFL again? 14. 10, 14? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's, and so you're so one of the things you're doing you're also like us I didn't think I'd have that much in common with you Santana but like us you have a um, so you have a podcast the Santana Ma show can you tell us a little bit about the theme of that show and how you came up with it and kind of the the good we always think of our podcast as a bit of a startup so kind of where you know kind of how that that idea came to be and what you're looking for in the Never, podcast. never imagined being in this seat right now, even talking to you guys or having my own podcast. Um, been a guy out the league for probably a year. Had just got back up here in the area from after you know spending two years of you know getting my MBA and my business management down at University of Miami, and was awarded yeah the U. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. I don't understand y'all from UM too. Right. You know? <laughs> I think we can hold that. Right. We, we hold a little, you know, we hold that UM right. a little heavier. Uh, I could say UMD for you guys. Right. Thank you. Right. Appreciate UM that. Yeah, sorry. Right. Uh, but uh, long story short, I uh, got up here, was doing some stuff with Oscar. Um, met Oscar through another friend of ours, mutual friend, Chad Dukes, was on his show. We, um, you know, spent a lot of time together on his show talking and, and behind the scenes. And he was like, hey, man, I think you have – something special, especially your story alone, you know, about your playing years and just what we share football-wise, you should take that over to the podcast world. There's something here, a little stint here, talking about my career. You know, a lot of people write books. I am probably won't get into that sooner or later. But we was doing an audio book about my career, and, you know, Oscar and Chad was like, hey, man, podcast might be something that you want to look into. Long story short, you know, waited a long time, and I was – pushed a little bit a little more from <laughs> from chad and i call <laughs> oscar like hey word. man i think <laughs> i need to jump into it so from there on i'm what 31 shows in now you know I just take my 31st show today and um it's been it's been something that i you know look forward to every week every week i look forward to growing and just knowing you know i'm listening to myself i'm listening to how this has helped me with my other things i'm doing as far as from tv and doing the radio and it's like i said before it's like something you paying for a coach this is my coach. My podcast is my coach. And to own it myself, learning that from Oscar and the folks, you know, to me, that's like being another entrepreneur. That's having something that you can say you you own. And at the end of the day, when it comes to paying you dividends, sooner or later, <laughs> I've always been that guy that you have to pay to play. You know, I've learned that from playing football. You have to pay to play. You have to spend something to get anything out of what you're trying to get. 
So being a guy that played for 14 years, spent a lot of money making sure my body was well enough to go out there and produce or be or put that production that I put out on the field every week. Same thing with this. You have to go out there and spend the dollar to be involved to say sooner or later someone's going to, you know, take heed to what you're saying and say, hey, I want to be a part of that, too, and then be able to pay you back. So I I think that a lot of hopefully a lot of our listeners um, who have gone through a career change at some time uh, can relate to what you might have gone through finishing up in the NFL. In a, our executive program, we have a lot of career changers, a lot of uh, ex-military or um, you know, big, ex -corp big corporation want to do something, a startup, like you, you name it. Um, what what did you find as or are you finding as the kind of hardest things about really doing a major career change uh, and what has been most ex unexpected? It's nothing hard when you put your mind to it. You know, that's what I find in life, period. Like, life is going to present you different obstacles. Life has always presented me something, you know, uh, different than everyone else's path. And what the, the way I made it to the NFL is no different from me making it in, in something else. So I just take on what I've learned already, and I, and I use those tools and do the same thing. Put my head down and move forward. Don't look back. And like I said before, one of the real success about being able to be in my shoes is knowing that you failed before, understanding what it felt like, understanding what happened, and saying, okay, do you learn from that or do you allow that to be the deciding factor of where you at? No, I won't. I won't allow that be because I feel like in life, period, you're going to fail doing something, you know, whether it's being a good father, whether it's being a good husband, a good boyfriend, you name it, you're going to fail. You're not going to be the best. Right. It's impossible to be the best. But if you learn from your mistakes, if you learn every day about what you're trying to be and who you're trying to become, then that gives you room to always grow. And I've done that with this second career. I'm just like, I'm a hustler. Uh, it's not <laughs> saying that I'm a guy on the street. No, right. you can you can name hustlers. Hustlers is a person that works, works yeah. his behind off to be, be to be one of the best at what he's doing and to actually look forward to being able to go out there and do that hustle again. And that's what I do. I take pride in being able to get up every morning and say, hey, let's go at it again. All right. So, Santana, you're on your 31st episode. We're currently, this is our 46th, I believe, and oh, stuff wow. like that. So we're, I yeah. was going to say, you're going <laughs> to, <laughs> you're going to pass you, man. Let's compare notes. What have you learned about being a, a personality on the podcast? One of the things I've learned, just my brand alone, man, that um, uh, one thing I didn't know how big my brand was. I didn't know how to really tap into it. You know, I just felt I play football and you, if I, I'm going to have fans and I'm going to have people that don't like me, you know, for whatever reason it is. And I've learned how to tap in. I feel that outside of playing ball, I've I've, I've gotten more attention now for, for the things I do on TV and radio and through my podcast than I did when I played ball, than mm -hmm. I did when I was running up the sidelines, catching bombs and scoring touchdowns. And it's crazy. And I don't, I, I don't know if – I think it's just because people now, they see me outside of those uniforms and they get to see the real me. They get to interact with me. They get to hear me. They get to say, man, you know what? You know, he, he relates to me. You know, the things he's talking about, his positivity is something that I like. Or he's never down on a person that, you know, anything I'm talking about, I'm trying to find a positive way to, to uh, relate to my audience and how to, you know, uh, you know, initiate the things that I'm trying to say by not talking down on somebody. And some of the people I bump into, into the, you know, out in the street shopping, you name it, doing anything, having dinner, the first thing they speak on is like, man, every time I listen to you, you find a way to give us the, you know, the the upside of what's ever happening. And I'm like, that's me. I hate negativity. And when I played the game, I hate it when they talk negative about me or the team. You know, one of my friends will tell you to this day, when I played – I barely listened to sports radio or even watch ESPN because I didn't want to hear the negative stuff because I feel like if you allow that stuff to sprinkle in and get sunk into you, then you go out there and you just play that. Santana, I hate to tell you, but there was a lot of highlights of, of you in Sports Center and things <laughs> yeah, like right, that that you, you can missed go out back on. And watch, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I do that now. <laughs> right. I do that now. I, trust me, I don't have to worry about playing ever again. I sit there and I just dwell into all that stuff. I gloat like, man, that was me. You know? And then my kids watch YouTube and so like, Dad, like, this, this what you, you did this? I'm like, yeah, it was me. So, no, I, I enjoy it now, but when I was playing, I was in, a, I was in one of those 
those things like the horses have. I had a blinder on, yeah. and I never want to look outside that box. Does that happen when you're in the, here in the podcast village here in D.C., when you're doing your podcast as well? You got your blinders on, you're focused on doing that? I'm focused on everything, man. I'm, I'm, I'm chasing so many things right now in life, you know, and, and uh, it's just, to me, I just, I, I live a happy life because I feel that when you're working, when you're busy, you know, it's nothing you could complain about. You know, I could be sitting back somewhere and 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 sitting there like, well, yeah, I once was a good football player. I didn't let football define me. You know, one of the things I did, I was blessed. I was fortunate. They told me I couldn't. They told me I wouldn't. I was able to do it. I don't have to prove to you that I did it. I just feel that it, all of us not chosen, and I was one of them, and I was fortunate for that. You know, we, we have a word for this in the entrepreneurship context, which is a serial entrepreneur, someone who's always reinventing themselves yes. and trying and new, doing new things and things. I mean, I would say so, Alana. Do you agree? Yeah, and I think it's really interesting um, that you've been able to do so many things. You also are, I believe I had... You read. You also have a camp, uh, football camp. Is that football correct? Camp. Okay. You name it. I'm, I'm do, just diving. What aren't you doing? I don't want to cut, <laughs> cut you off, but I yeah. have. A, I'm just starting up a trucking business. Okay. Um, STM carriers. Um, it's, it's not off the ground yet, but I just. I'm. I'm into the. You know, before you know it, I have my first truck soon. I, I had to go through all the. You know, the preliminary stages of getting. You know, uh, qualified and everything, and get my business out there. Um, What's it called again? Uh, STM Carriers. STM Carriers. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you'll be hearing about it. We'll be up and, and down the streets. How do you decide how, of all the things? Like how I do say, you it's like you, you have folks that, you know, I have like friends that does so much. And, you know, you're listening to them talking about different people that they use and what business is growing and, and how you can tap into it. And you saying to yourself, one of the things I've always done is I try to protect my family. You know, I try to protect my brothers, my friends, my cousins, you name it. And there's a lot of people out in this world don't have the chance to work. And for whatever our reason is, they, they apply for jobs and they don't get them. And I'm like, if I can form a job for you and you go out there and do the, do the you know, right due diligence of getting yourself qualified to, to work, then I'm the guy supplying you work, you know. Yeah. And that's better than me giving you money, you know what I mean? So, that's you know, I've been a guy, like I said, I stepped out on many ledges because of that, because I've always wanted to provide for other folks, and I try to find other ways of providing. I give you a job instead of giving you money. And I think when it comes to certain things that I've chosen, it was every, it was beneficial for them and me. So this trucking business is something that's been growing, and one of my friends has been in it for like two or three years. He's grown his fleet to like almost 14-plus trucks. And he played ball. And he's like, Tanner, this, I'm making some of the money that I, that I saw when I played ball. And I think they need more of us. They need more people, you know, who, who um, they need more businesses that because some of the loads I'm getting, I can't even, you know, um, you know, uh, I need to share more some yeah. of my work because I have so much. And he's like, you need to get into this. I let it. And is this an example when you have mentioned kind of following the cab, right? Other people are putting their Jumping money in. Some, this in is an cab. example of this. Jumping that cab, man. Hey, if it's working for you, okay. If I do the right research and yep. and you lead me, you mm -hmm. know, and I trust in you enough to to lead me to that direction, and I feel like it's something I can do. Mm -hmm. I have to feel it, though. It's nothing I'm just going to jump into. I have to feel that it's, it's something worth my while. So what kind of cabs are you paying attention to right now? Oh, man, you name it. <laughs> Anything is making a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Anything is making a dollar. But, like, are there sectors that you, like, look for or stay away from? Are you interested in tech, pharma, <sighs> consumer products, it. everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, i got to imagine with someone with your background that somebody in the sports, apparel, athletics kind of. I've had many things thrown at me. Make but, sure you meet I'm, our next guest, by the way. <laughs> and I turn down many of things. Uh, one of the things that rose my that has risen my eyebrows of lately is medical marijuana. To be honest with you, yeah. you know, and it's it's been to the point where I've seen folks, you know, in my upbringings, you know, go to jail behind this stuff. And I'm like, now the government is allowing this thing to to be legal in certain areas and to accumulate wealth. They're getting wealthy off it, and there's a lot of other people that I know in this business is getting wealthy off it. So, hey. Let me catch that cab and see if yeah. I can learn something I about it. I love that. I love and, the catching the cab. You know, that's, so, that's, I'm going to have to use so, that. So, you know, I, I've stuck my nose out there, and, and a, a friend of mine was doing it, and I said, hey, teach me a little more about it. And so I'm following those, you know, okay. those footsteps as well. So Now, you had, um, when you talked about the trucking company, you referred to, talked about how if you create this company, you can help you know, create jobs. Mm -hmm. And so... It sounds to me that you're a bit of a social entrepreneur, which we yeah. work a lot with at the Dingman Center. So you're kind of looking for triple bottom, double bottom lines in what you do. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, and I know you have a lot of other, of charitable work too. Like, do you see your, some of these interests coalescing around any certain passion 
passion like you talked about football for young kids mm. or you're making sure you're doing things that are creating more jobs like where do you see kind of those all those things aligning for you well, I'm just a giver you know and I had to find ways of giving without really giving like without giving that what just, I yeah. earned hard worked hard for and so I found a way of giving my time I give my time to the youth by mentoring you know, showing up, you know, uh, providing these camps, providing the many, you know, uh, um, you know, things I do to donate to different communities, whether it's coat drives, whether it's food, you know, during the holidays, whether it's book bags, you know, you know, the startup when uh, school startup, I have to, you know, uh, find ways to be able to give and not feel like I'm giving too much or giving at the wrong time. And that's the same thing I feel when it comes to uh, accumulating, you know, uh, or providing jobs for people so they can accumulate you know their 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 finances can you know finally see see something more than what they've been seeing. Um, I'm I want I've always had this thing about being wealthy, you know. And you play football, you a lot of money. Yeah. And you know have you, you see a number and they tell you oh he got all the millions. No, they think half of that, you know. <laughs> and then you you find out that you know money brings problems and half the time it's from your family. You're taking care of bills that you shouldn't take care of. So like I said before, from my experiences alone, I see what money could take you and how far it can take you. And I've always said to myself that I can't just allow myself to be pigeonholed and say, this is going to provide for everything I want to do. I take care of too many people. So therefore I've always had to find ways to generate more, you know, yeah. and that's why I've been accustomed to doing the things i the way I do them, I go out and find other ways to accumulate that wealth that I want. So, I mean, I just think it's impressive, uh, Santana, how you were able to go ahead and recognize that it's not just kind of, I guess, the, the Robin Hood approach where if you have something to give it away, but rather it's to allow that to multiply yeah. by making those investments. And it sounds like you're really investing your time as well as your money into these okay. endeavors. So I, I just think it's admirable. Thank you. I know um, we need to wrap up, but I was just going to ask one last question. So since you said the NFL is not for long, mm -hmm. so one certainty that you know for NFL players is that at some point they will likely not be playing in the NFL. Yeah. Um, what advice would you pass along as a role model to younger players of what they can do while they are still playing um, to, to, to create the right path for themselves when they are no longer in the NFL? It's funny. I'm not sure if any of the guys, you know, appreciate the game the way I appreciate it to where I was so caught up in the game I cared less about what was going on with the money that they gave us yeah I knew I had money but I was so blinded by you know what I had to do on the field to where I cared less about what I did with it I want the, if I can pass on anything I just tell these guys from day one pay attention to the finance part of it you know pay attention to the money that you you've 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 come into and understand you know find the right resources or the right people that can show you what to do with it. You know, they tell us to put it in the bank. They tell you to find a financial advisor. No, find someone that has been through it and ask them, what allow you to be where you at after the game? What can I do now? And I think I didn't learn that. Like I said, I had to go through some, some hard times to realize what, you know, could happen. And I saw it. And if I dwelled in it or sat in that puddle and, and cried more and made that puddle bigger, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, but, you know, I took it, you know, on the chin and I was able to say, hey, let me move forward because the only way I'm going to be able to, you know, get over it by moving forward. But for these kids that's coming into it now, don't even allow that to happen to you. Hear some of these stories. Um, talk to some of the people that's trying to seek you because a lot of times these guys now, it's a lot of guys that seek you, seek the guys that's coming in now to teach you, say, hey, I don't want you going down this path. Take that money, put it up, do something with it, and don't allow somebody in a suit they say you can't <laughs> trust to try to tell you what right to do. You know, maybe in a bow tie, but yeah. not a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santana, thank you so much for being on our show. No uh, we look forward to be, we're following your show and hopefully connect with you another time yeah. in the future. Thank I, you so much. I appreciate you. UDM, yeah. one time for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> So it was uh, it was great having Santana in studio. It was kind of cool to meet him and get to know him a little better. I must better. admit, I was a little starstruck yeah. at first, <laughs> but once we got the conversation going, I mean, it was great to get his insights into kind of where he was and what he learned from the NFL and where he's taking it next. And I thought it was interesting how he alluded to trying to find ways to give his time, you know, treasure, and talent. And I'm sure that you know, although. Most of us might not be able to relate. We certainly do hear the story over and over again of 
of professional athletes, you know, professional uh, other celebrities who you know, are in a very similar situation that he was, is that you start making all this money. He's 22, 23 years old, don't know where to go necessarily for advice. And it sounds like, you know, a lot of people coming at you with all these different, uh, different ideas. And I think it's nice. It's, it's refreshing to hear him say, yeah, I get it, but I, you know, I kind of took my learnings from it and now I'm going to try to, I have plenty of time to then try to kind of find the, a better way to do it by not just handing out money and just making, making investments, but really doing it for myself. And trusting himself. I mean, we all appreciate the fact that every entrepreneur is going to get advice about pivot points that they need to make or investments that they need to make. And you have to say no to something because otherwise you do run out of capital. So in his case, in Santana's case, he's getting this experience while he's at the NFL starts to surround himself by trusted people, starts trusting himself, and he's learning it along the way. So 14 years, is that's definitely above average for an NFL career, and he's kind of managing his resources along the way. Goes back and gets an MBA when he's done with his NFL career and now looks at these opportunities with, I think, a, a more confidence. And I thought it was also you know interesting how he said the follow the talked about following the cab. I thought That's that perfect was perfect advice. I mean, particularly perfect. in the in the industries that he's talking about is that you you don't you don't always have to be the first one into an industry, and sometimes it's the fast follower that if we I mean that ends up it really win, either winning in the market or making more money or losing less. Uh, and I think for him, it sounds like he's learned enough from being first one in. Let me be the fast follower. Let me, let me, you know, let me not be the Netscape. But, I mean, I think he also recognizes that he's trying to go ahead and commingle his investments with other people who believe in the idea. Right? He told the story that he's uh, in the NFL and people want to take his money and make investments on his behalf. Now he's looking at a strategic investment saying, I'm going to put in my money, but you've got to go ahead and put in your – we see this all the time in entrepreneurship, right? The the founder of the company has got to be able to put their house up for mortgage and go ahead and put their own right. money in investment before, let's say, an angel investor is going to do it. Yeah, and I, I think it's also really impressive – uh, it's just the the multitude of things that he's doing. I know that he's you know an, a fo- trucking. An analyst, Who knew trucking? trucking, medical marijuana, and he sounds like he is really you know trying to be a student in each one of those you know fields as well as you know giving back uh, giving back a lot to the community. So uh, I think we're I had heard him talk in another podcast about how he felt so committed to the DMV um, that he really wanted to make a, a home here, and I think it's you know great for our community that he has decided to stay. Um, yeah, that was delightful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thanks again for tuning in to another great episode of Bootstrapped, a Dingman Center podcast. I'm Ilana Fine. You can follow me on Twitter at Ilana Fine. And I'm Joe Bailey. You can follow me on Twitter at Joseph P. Bailey. Uh, thank you very much to all of our loyal listeners and to our great friends here at Podcast Village who host not only our show, The Bootstrap, but also uh, The Santana Moss Show. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I think, Alana, it's great to have you here and uh, chatting with you again with, with such an esteemed guest. And until next time, we ask you to bootstrap your next venture. Bootstrapped would like to thank its cast. Bootstrapped hosts, Ilana Fine and Joe Bailey. Bootstrapped executive producer, Oscar Santana. And associate director of the Dingman Center, Holly Diarmid. Remember to subscribe to our show on iTunes and leave a five-star review.